road bend and we'll go through uh, the slides. Now, just a minute. There we go. All right. So we'll start with Sierra. So for the Sierra Libraries, uh, just a little reminder on 2024. So it was really about creating a single experience, an ecosystem. So we feel that we've delivered on commitments. We've, we've been trying to simpl simplify and modernize solutions. Uh, what we have done this year so far, there was Sierra 6.2 in Q2 2004. Uh, so some of the things that we've done is about batch cancelling order records, placing hold on multiple volumes. So I thought just as a little reminder here, these are the, the really the, um, the really the highlights here. So in circulation, in acquisitions for Sierra APIs, and then a few a few separate things. Now, just to keep in mind here, we are still working quite a lot on Sierra. You'll see in the releases that I'm showing and the plans for 2025, there is absolutely no plan to sunset Sierra in any way. So please, <laughs> this is an important message. We are uh, still actively working on it. The roadmap is still very active. Um, so just you you can be assured that um, there are still a lot of great things coming. So just to go through a few of these, the batch order cancellation, I'm showing you some screenshots here. So that was a request by a lot of libraries and you could see here in the top of the screen, this was an enhancement request. You know that you have the power to vote to submit requests and vote on requests. And what that does is it pushes it to the front of the development. And so that is really what we're doing is we're answering your questions and your requests. So um, batch order cancellation, there was also the request. Again, it's an enhancement request to be able to place multiple holds or holds on multiple items. So this has been done as well and holds on multiple volumes. So similar, but different. And then Sierra 6.3, uh, that is coming out in Q4. <clears throat> and here I have a copy again of the, uh, of, of the web page where you can see detail of that. You know this page, you know how you can see as well how many people have voted for each item. And some of the highlights again in this Again, it's about delivering on commitments. You could see from these little light bulbs that these are all enhancement ideas. So from the customer community. So we are really pushing those to the roadmap. It's about simplifying, modernizing, and a lot of API work as well. So that really shows you that our idea is uh, we're keeping, we're keep, keep, we keep building in Sierra, but we also keep building that integration, that opening through APIs. So to open up Sierra to any external integrations that you need. So in here, some of the highlights will be uh, the, the updated URL checker reports. So there are more options in here. You will be able to navigate very easily from create lists to global and rapid update. This is as well uh, something, of course, the create lists is still our number one functionality in Sierra. It's absolutely uh, beloved in, uh, by our customer and missed by some of them who have changed to other products uh, because it's really unique in its potential to query the entire system and then do these updates. So from here, from create lists, you're able to now send it directly uh, to Rabbit updates, global updates. And then some information about 2025. This is tentative, of course, but again, customer driven enhancement. So we are really looking to idea exchange to the MIP enhanced process. Um, we're simplifying things again, modernizing, and again, the API integration. So I hope this shows 
throughout the Q1, Q2, and 2025, that these are the four areas that we keep looking at and that we keep enhancing in. So, of course, all of the columns are filled in differently, different items that you ask us to enhance, that you're voting on, but we are really focused on these four verticals. And just, uh, just a reminder, I know that you probably uh, are very aware of these already, but any time you have a question about the roadmap, you can go to uh, the links, as you can see at the top, so the product board, everything that we do and that we plan is in there, so you can see things that are happening now, that happened previously, and that are planned for the future. And in the idea exchange, you can, of course, load any ideas that you have, and there's the voting process. So you can as well vote on other people's ideas, other libraries' ideas, see what other libraries' preoccupations are. So this is all uh, vital so that the development goes in the right way. So what is important for you, again, gets voted for, and we have that commitment of product to include these ideas in the development. So it's very important um, that you visit these pages and that you vote for them. Now, I wanted to mention Summon again. So uh, some of you have Summon already. Uh, Summon again works perfectly with Sierra. So Summon works with Alma as well. And my colleagues will show you some more uh, Summon over Alma and give you more information about the Summon roadmap as well later, I believe. Uh, but just to again show you that Summon is completely integrated with Sierra in the way that you could see real time availability with Sierra in the summon page, and you have access to the user account. So this is really unique for summon, and it only does that with Sierra and with Alma. Uh, I've included here some links, and I, I believe that you will receive these presentations, uh, but to links that you, you are already visiting prob probably, and uh, these are on the ex -Libris Knowledge Center when you click through to summon, and what this points to is really the webinar page and uh, the roadmaps. So everything is on there. You could see previous roadmap presentations in PDF. You see video uh, recordings and any kinds of recordings that were made as webinars as well. And as a little reminder, or to, to as a preview for those who haven't seen this yet, so what you can expect for your summon working with Sierra is really here this integration of the user account. And I'm pointing here with my mouse. You could see this little uh, library card here. And when you're logged in, there's this little person that appears here on the top right corner. So it indicates that there is that integration with the library card from Sierra. And actually here at the bottom right, this is a, an, an image of the library card. So what the user can see there is any items that they've checked out, fines and fees and requests, uh, their reading history, if they have opted in for that, of course, and if you are making that available to them messages and personal details. And then of course, with the full functionality of that library account. So if this user is allowed to uh, renovate books, if they're allowed to, um, uh, to place requests and to pay fines and fees, then this all becomes actionable. Uh, they could sort things, they can renew, et cetera. So this depends of course of your, um, uh, of your circulation rules. And on the left hand side, this is what you see in Summon. So you would see for uh, print and electronic, you would see electronic availability, of course, but as well print. And this is what is coming real time from Sierra. So you'll see the little uh, green dots, there's yellow dots, and there's red dots according to the status that is coming through Sierra. So in this case, there's one available, one in use, mm -hmm. one out. 
and the request button where people can just uh, request that item, fill in a pickup location. They might as well add a date where uh, after which they don't need that book anymore. And they could just uh, fill in those details and request items straight from the summit page. So that was just a reminder. Let me know if you have any any more questions about that or if you didn't know this existed and you want this uh, as an option and I'll be happy to to give you more information about that. And now something completely different. Uh, Vega library experience uh, and that, that is what we call Vega LX. Now. This is a, a platform that we have really uh, developed over the last few years in innovative. Because it doesn't like, for example, because it just like cuts and spots new. Mm. Should I, should I put the um, transition like the fade in? Yes. So just yeah. Okay. yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Is this is was this a suggestion for me? Okay, I could hear somebody speaking in the background. Um, so the library experience platform with Vega is really about transforming the library. This is, of course, more applicable uh, or, or we see this a lot more in public libraries and and it's trickling through, of course, to academic libraries as well. Why? Because transformation is everywhere. We know and you know that uh, children start from a very young age with electronic devices and they grow up uh, with these devices and they grow up with all kinds of information that is always available, that is always there. And basically you start as a patron, so you start as a user, you are of course functioning in the community, you could be a librarian yourself. Or, uh, or a student. What happens is we are really inundated with all of this information everywhere. And what happens is the same way that you have a TikTok, Snapchat, Uber, Netflix, we now have chat GPT, we have artificial intelligence. What happens is that this user from a very young age, and, and we know that the students from now have grown, digitally, they've grown up digitally, and we, of course, have to function digitally. Um, but what we know is that they expect us to function that way. They expect the library to function that way as well. So they're not saying we want everything everywhere except from the library. They want the same service from the library, and we feel that we have to keep up with that if we want the, the library to stay relevant. If we want to, the people to visit the library and use the services, we need to be there as well. So we want to offer everything everywhere all at once as well at the library. So this is a roadmap. It's a rolling one. <laughs> and uh, we made this rolling because it's a very long roadmap. I wanted to show you what Innovative is working on, um, especially on the, the, the public library sector. But you, you will have seen that Sierra is also under and Alex Starter is also under. So it's fully integrated in our roadmap and it's all part of this larger ecosystem where we want the user to feel part of modern life and offer services that are relevant for them. So this is um, the Vega wheel or the Vega, let's say, circle of life, as you might want to call it. And I just wanted to introduce you to that concept because um, here at the bottom, you could see where it says ILS. Now, this is where uh, we place Sierra. So. Sierra has, of course, all of these traditional modules of reporting, circulation, cataloging, acquisition, serials, uh, just as, as Alma has. Now, what we have done with the Vega library platform is that we have added a, a different modules on top of that that are connected through this connect layer here in the middle that are connected with the ILS. So what they do is they elevate the traditional 
ILS functionality into this modern world. So we're looking at a brand new discovery. And as a discovery layer, we can offer, of course, summon. And we have also a big discover. We have an interact layer that is really all about real time uh, interacting with users. Uh, so this could be a chat bot. Uh, these could be different kinds of, of interaction. The promotion layer, and this is about newsletters, about modern notices. And I'll speak to that in, in just a moment because this is available with Sierra and Vega program. And then as well, um, I will show this at the end. So this is, again, this is a standalone that you can use with Sierra integrated, or you could also use it with Alma, for example. Now, we've been working on them for a few years now. So we've launched our context engine so that that does the connection between Sierra and the Vega platform. We've launched that in 2020. And so we've been working on this very heavily in the past years. So we're rolling out all of these platform, all, all of the parts of this platform gradually, and we're increasing all of their potential. Now, why is this important for you? Because you are able to use the Alex starter notices with Sierra. So when you have Sierra, you are actually able to use completely modern notices that are built in this Vega platform, but you can use that already with Sierra. It's included, so you just have to ask support to activate this for you, set it up, um, but they are completely available for you. So what it says is um, completely modern notices. So you know the notices that you have now, and they tend to be just sort of black and white, uh, very boring, <laughs> just text message of, Hello, Caroline, your book is ready for pickup. You have to pick it up before next week or it will be gone. Thank you. Bye bye. That's normally the type of notices that traditionally come out of ILSs. And I'll start sharing my screen now uh, because I wanted to show it to you live. Let me just move here and give you an idea of what you can expect. So again, with Sierra, it is included with your subscription. So if you have Sierra and you're working with these traditional notices, just know that you can switch. And now what this looks like is this. So you have all of these different types of notices that are available to you. Now I'm just going to scroll through. So there's different overview notices, there's courtesy notices, there's holds pickup, there's statement of checkout, adjustments, bold cancellation, there's overview one, pick up a cancellation, a bill notice, there is a recall notice, statement of charges, another overdue, fines, additional courtesy, and uh, you can see that there's a lot of them, there's manual fine, another overdue, and bills and fines. Now, what this means is you do not have to activate all of these, it just means that they are an option for you to do. So if you only have one overdue notice, that's fine. You don't have to use the other four or five or six. You don't have to use any of these, but you can. And what it does is it will give you a completely modern notice and it will give you a lot of statistics for you to work with. And you will have the option to include any kind of information on this holds notice. So you see here, uh, this is our demo system. So we don't we don't have a working library where we send out notices and uh, to there's we have set up one here that is the holds pickup notice. Uh, you'll you'll notice that the other ones say draft or setup required. This one says it's published. And when you do, you actually get statistics already. You can see how many are scheduled, how many bounced, what was the opening rate, what is the link click rate. And when I open this up, you will see a completely different type of experience. So this is what it's all about. We want the user to go, wow, an email from the library. We don't want the notice to go straight to spam because it's 
ugly and they don't think it's useful. We want you to have a tool that users say, wow, this is my notice. And they look forward to receiving that email from the library. So when you are here in the background, uh, you'll see a lot of detail. So once your notices go out and they should go out every day to hundreds of people, you will see the performance. So how many are scheduled to send, the delivery rate, the open rate, the click rate, bounce rate, fail rate, spam rate. And I could click through to these and see the detail. Which ones have been delivered? Which ones have been opened? Which ones have been clicked down? And actually, if I go down, you'll see the links. When it says the link click rate here, it means that when you have included any links in that pickup, in that notice, then you will see how many people uh, clicked on it and how many total clicks were there. And, and here, this is the performance tab. There's a second tab that is languages. And this is very interesting as well, especially internationally. You could set different language templates. Uh, so in this case, and you could have up to four now, but this will be uh, this will be augmented to have even more templates. Uh, so this is really thought for international or libraries that serve large communities. Now, you'll see here there's a default holds pickup notice and there's a Spanish one that was published as well. So when the user indicates a specific language as their uh, preferred language for communication, automatically they will receive the language template that is applicable to them. And now what it does is you can then edit this notice or any type of notice and make it this beautiful, informative email. So not just a pickup notice or a holds notice or a fine, but you can include any kind of information that you feel relevant for library news, also for uh, just a, 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 maybe something about uh, your institution, or it could be title selections, just anything you feel is relevant. Now, if I browse through, so you can see here on the left-hand side, it's a pickup notice. And there's a lot more information than just to pick up notice. So let me open this up and you'll see what kind of editor this, um, this is. Because you might say, oh, well, this looks very nice, but it looks very complicated and I don't have time for this. Now, I just wanted to reassure you that it could not be any simpler. So this is the editor for this message. Now, According to the type of notice, if it's a bill, if it's an overdue, if it's a pickup, it will pull in information from Sierra and it will do that automatically. So this, for example, will say, hi, John or Caroline, your holds are ready for pickup. There's a picture of the library, there's some text, and it will pull in information from Sierra automatically. So the pickup is, this is the location that you've set as a pickup. These are the items ready for pickup. So it will pull in the item type. It will pull in the title, the author, the pickup date. It will do that automatically from Sierra. But then that is a, that would be a traditional notice, except that it's beautiful. You already have a different interaction with this notice because it has the picture as well. And this is really useful for overdues. And you're thinking, oh my God, I don't even know what this title looks like anymore. Well, now you know, <laughs> and you might remember where you put it because it comes with the cover image. But within this whole, this pickup notice, I can actually add all kinds of information. So there could be information about our institution is closing or this library is closing or inventory on this and that date. Or uh, there is a there's a few days off and the, the, the university is closing. You might include that information. You might include title selections. So you could put here anything you want. You might have your social media. You might have a link to your events in Vega program, which I'll show you later, but you can include anything. So you can include any kinds of content blocks and I'm pointing at the right hand side now. You can include columns, buttons, dividers, text, headings, images, videos, social media. How do you do this? 
Well, it's really simple. You just drag and drop it. And I want to do an image. You click on it. You have access to upload an image of your own or look in millions of stock photos because we are including uh, just um, a free for free a subscription to these image banks. So you could go to the image banks and just start searching and you do books. And I can just start loading images and oh, I like this one. I'm going to drag and drop it and pull it right there. And you could also use AI. So we have AI when you see these little green stars. Uh, you can use this for any kind of text or titles or also images. So when I click on generate images, I could say, for example, a library with a dog and a sofa. And it will ask me what type of generated pictures that I want. Uh, so, for example, here I'm editing the prompt. Do I want a cozy library with a golden retriever lounging on a vintage leather sofa? Or do I want an elegant library with a sophisticated poodle? Uh, maybe I'll take the golden retriever. And then I can choose how I want this image to look. So I can <coughs> style and maybe I'll take rent retro vintage and it will be generating the image for me. So we'll see what it comes up with. But you see that you can use your own images. You can search in our image bank, or you can use AI to generate these images as well in real time. So you can make this as complex and as, as, as easy as you want. And this should be taking just a few moments. And there we go. So look what AI just generated. So it's not to say that you have to use this, but just know that it is included. So if we want to upload this image, there we go. So I have just quickly generated this beautiful golden retriever <laughs> and I've included it in my email. And again, I could just do anything. I can pull in here a divider. I can pull in a heading and I will just say, um, and we are mascot. And I could do that. So it becomes extremely easy to transform what is normally a very, let's let's call it boring because it is a very boring text message with no more information um, that the user is receiving without any type of joy <laughs> into something really beautiful that you could use as sort of a marketing tool and an information tool. So that is um, Alex Starter. And again, it is available for all of the CRL libraries today. You could set it up. I will work with you for the setup. You will have training to know how to use this. But I hope you'll see it's just the drag and drop system. Uh, so it, it, it needs virtually no, uh, <laughs> no, no, um, no specific uh, training. But it is, of course, uh, included in our services. And I'm going back to my uh, slides and because the last thing that I wanted to show you is, um, just give me one second to start sharing the screen again. Oops, let me see this. There you go. So within this Alex, uh, uh, this library experience platform, you have Alex Starter that is available with all the Sierra libraries. It is available today. It is free. It is included in your subscription. So you can switch to these mother notices. I wanted to introduce you as well to Vega Program. And this is an event module, but it's not only events. It's really about events and room booking and material booking. And this is available as a standalone, which means that Sierra libraries can use it, but Alma libraries can also use it. So the big question is this, how can you get more customers at your events and expand the library's reach? And our answer is Vega Program. Why? Because it's really about doing very easy event marketing and have a bigger impact. Now, I won't go into a lot of detail in this uh, because uh, I will be so happy to give you a full demonstration about what everything can do. 
um, in how you do it. What I wanted to give you is just at a glance information to whet your appetite <laughs> and to have you uh, contact me for this wider demo. But these are the key things. So really it is about faster. And you look at the left-hand side, that's where we start. The setup is all done in, in a templated form. What it means is you will just fill in information that you feel is important for that event or for that room setup or for that equipment booking. And once you fill in that information in the background, it goes live on our website. So you don't have to program anything. You don't have to uh, do any coding or any switching between uh, platforms. You fill in the template, whatever you need, if you need little or you need much, and it goes live. So that's on the left-hand side. You can keep track of who registers. You can register manually. Uh, customers can, can register themselves online. So they have that integration with Sierra. You have that integration because your customers are already in the system. So <clears throat> you have all of their details already when they log in. And then in the middle here, it's really all about event marketing. But again, as I said, you have uh, your room booking as well, and you have as well equipment booking. Now, these images here in the, in the center show you the type of information that the user can see. So the user, if we look at this image here in the, in the center, the Make 101 Introduction to Makerspace, this is an example of what they would see on your website. So according again to the information that you have filled in, the user can see an event description, how to book, when and where it is, whether it's free, whether there's an age for it, whether any kind of information that you have added, where it is, uh, when and how. And there's a QR code that the system generates automatically. So this is really because you can email this flyer and you could uh, print it out and people can just scan the QR code and sign up for this event directly. There's online as well a calendar, and you have different formats. You can filter in different ways. But here, there's a little screenshot about, for example, a, a grid view calendar or sort of a, a, an inline calendar is possible as well. I'll show you in a minute live. Um, but on your website for your users, it's really easy to see per libraries what kinds of events there are every day and sign up for any of them. And then we have here in the, in the, in the center down here, uh, there is as well the option to create, and it creates it in a matter of seconds. When you filter on specific libraries or specific type of events, you can create like a, a type of brochure. So that is what we're looking at here, where uh, you see I, I have a specific date range and location and categories, and it will generate this kind of uh, mini calendar with basic information about the events. So it will tell you, well, there's magic tea and magic tales at this library. Uh, this is the age group, if booking is required or not, if there's a cost, etc. So you can generate this yourself to put it on your uh, bulletin board in the library, or you could stick it on the door of, of a specific room where you're doing events, or the user can do this as well. Now, I do this all the time. I print it off and I stick it on my fridge or I send it forward in my WhatsApp groups. So there's loads of options that you have with this tool. And on the right hand side, I've listed here bigger impact. Now, this, of course, is of interest for you as librarians because what it means is you will have statistics on the impact of your events. So again, it's events, it's room booking, it's material booking, but you will be able to see exactly sort of the success of each event, what each library has done, what the feedback has been on events, so that you know what is successful and what is not. And of course, you will want to do more of what works. Uh, so you can see where there is demand and you can amplify where that demand is. So it, all in all, it's a very uh, complete tool that is easy for you to set up. It's 
very easy for the user to manage, and you can really measure the impact that it's having in your community. And I'll very quickly show you this live so that you have an idea of what it could be like. Um, so this is one of our demo sites uh, for every town library. And I just quickly wanted to show you this so you have a little bit more than, than, those, than that screenshot. But your events would sort of show up in this carousel and you can have any kinds of events here at uh, your library so people can browse through. They could also browse through upcoming events here through a list and just scroll down and see whatever is, what is of interest. Every time everything is hyperlinked, so they would click through to the event. There is basic details about where it is, what time it is, whether it's part of a series, whether there's a post or they have to sign up, the booking is required. There are categories that you can set up or they can have a look. So we're looking at the list view now. They could go to the calendar view. And this is uh, this was on the screenshot. So if you wanted to see uh, per, per day what is in there, you would see that as well. Now, if that's not enough, you can, of course, filter. So you would be able to filter on a specific library or on a specific category of event or, again, on a specific date. And when I scroll down, you could see events by category again or events by location. And very quickly here, you've, you see that create brochure. Now, when I click on that, it actually opens uh, what I mentioned before this sort of calendar that you can put in. And now uh, let's see, for example, the start date and the end date. You can do categories, locations, and you'll see it's found 59 events. And it's built a PDF for me in a matter of seconds. When I open this up, this is the kind of calendar view that you can create, uh, that the user can create with their old filters or the library. And again, you can email this, print this, um, any and this. Now, here as well, I wanted to show you. On here, you can have your room bookings and your equipment bookings. The room bookings are also extremely easy. So it's very visual. Uh, it does not need any introduction because you, you cannot go lost. I can filter on location or room capacity or date or time or duration, or I can go through the list and see what is available. And this is very visual. So red would indicate that it's booked and green that it's not. And basically, you have all of the information here. So if I go to Aldeburgh, I get see it's available now, capacity 10. And when I hover over here, I can see more information. So uh, what is that we've set a text here. There's uh, on-site parking. There's refreshments. This is the availability. You can have default booking types. There's a default layout. And you can even add pictures to this. And so this is very useful for your users uh, because they would just be able to click through and see images and book any room that they find is suitable and they would just select their, uh, their time and do it. And the same thing goes for equipment booking, follows the same easy structure. So we will see these filters at the top, what is available, any images that we've added, any specific information, and they would be able to book it right away. And the last thing I'll show you uh, to really demonstrate how easy this will be for you to set up and maintain is this easy toggle that you have here at the bottom uh, right. So I, I could toggle between public view, which is PB, or staff view. And what I started with was saying how easy this is to set up. This is your staff interface. And if I were to click on any of the events, I could show you here. You could add bookings manually and you could see any kind of information. And, you, and I'll show you how this was set up. So it is really a templated form. You could set in any sort of a time, event description, categories, 
and you can fill in any information that, re that you require. So of course, some is mandatory, like the date will be mandatory, the time will be mandatory, the location, but then it becomes really all about what you need. Is there a cost? Then you could do that. Is there a setup time? Is there a cleanup time for this room? Is there a specific layout that you need? Do you want to limit the amount of bookings? Do you want to limit the amount of bookings per member? Do you want any kinds of restrictions? Then you can set this. You will add an image to this. You can even add questions to this room. Um, could you tell us things? You can make them mandatory or not. You could make the multiple choice, their short answer, long answers. So a lot of options to set this up. And there is a very easy uh, sort of setup to cancel events or to edit any kinds of events. And there is the automatic follow up with the users. So they will receive when they sign up, they will receive a confirmation email. They will then receive another um, a reminder email before the event, and they will receive inf um, a, uh, a feedback email after the event to collect their feedback. So it becomes a, a full uh, ecosystem, full system that uh, you can easily use, again, with Sierra or with Alma or any kind of ILS, really. But you do have that integration with Sierra, with the users, when you use it with Sierra. And that was everything for me. So I've shown you quite a bit. Uh, we've gone over Sierra. We've gone over um, uh, Alex starter notices. And we've talked a little bit about Salmon. And we finished with uh, Vega program. So that's quite a bit. I'll just open it up for questions now. And let me stop sharing my screen. I think we've got a little bit of time for questions before the next session. I have not seen the chat, so I don't know if there's anything in there. There's nothing in the chat. Yeah, so you can, I'm just asking the audience here if there are any questions or comments, and I'm like, I don't see much. Um, yeah, so I think if there's any questions, you can just put them forward. There's one question. Beyond the site. Audience, can you please state your name, institution, and your question? Thank you. Um, so, good day, colleagues. Sibyl Sen Hwashu from the University of Poitier. I just wanted to find out in the recent light of the new recent Sierra updates, is it still Worth it to continue using Sierra and will there be support in the near future? Thank you. So I, I I don't hear you very clearly. I think the question was about the future of Sierra. Is that is that correct? Uh, can you hear me now? I can hear you, but it's a bit woozy. <laughs> it, it, did I hear it well that you're asking about the sort of the future of Sierra and a future development? Uh, I'm asking in light of the recent updates, mm -hmm. is it still worth it to keep on utilizing Sierra? And also, will there be any future developments for Sierra? Thank you. Okay, yes. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Caroline, do you want me to comment? No, I I've heard the question. So if if it was uh, if it was worth uh, keep utilizing Sierra and with an eye in future development, am I right, Rob? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I think the answer is um, it depends on your particular circumstances in your particular libraries. Um, Sierra's not going away, and as you saw at the start of Caroline's presentation, there's an extensive roadmap. Um, but it's a it's a different roadmap from Alma. So you'll you'll see Alma after after the tea break shortly. Um, Alma uh, comes from a, a different heritage with different functionality, and has very rich e resource management functionality. But Sierra is is still being developed, as you saw. There's an extensive roadmap. Um, 
the ERM functionality is enriched further by plugging into Summon and 360 Link. So with Sierra, you, you have basically two systems, Summon 360 uh, and Sierra. Uh, and that's fine for a lot, for a lot of uh, our customers. Uh, and uh, as you can see, you know, there's exciting things like LX Starter there as well. So Sierra is definitely not going away um and still being developed as you, as you can see from the roadmap um but you might find looking at alma that you know the time is right for you to to move to, to alma and that's a decision for your library uh not for us we don't dictate uh what you do uh we don't sunset products uh but our philosophy is you know if it's right for you uh we'll help you do it and we'll help you migrate um, and if it's not right, then we'll carry on supporting you on, on uh, Sierra Summon um, for as, as long as you want. Yeah, I think, I think that's, perfectly, that's perfectly well explained by Rob. So I would really stress that the fact that uh, within Clarivate we have innovative solutions and Exlibri solutions, it's all about options for you. So um, I, I think you saw from the Sierra roadmap, it's actively developed. We are planning ahead. Uh, so there is absolutely no problem in staying on Sierra and you could stay on <laughs> as long as you want. There's no, there's no plans to sunset anything. Uh, we're developing it, we're opening it, um, we're building on the platform that sits on top of Sierra. Um, however, if you are looking at doing things differently or your focus is shifting in the library, for example, as Rob said, more to, to ERM, um, or you are ready to go full SaaS instead of um, on-premises. So that it, it depends on your circumstances. It depends on your, um, on your priorities for the library. But it's for us, it's all about options. So whether you want to stay on Sierra, we're, uh, we'll be lucky to have you. And if you are looking uh, to move to Alma, then also that's also a good thing. So our team is there to help you um, and make and make help you make the right decision for it. Mm -hmm. Just um, to illustrate the point, uh, here's a little graphic about uh, what, what we're offering. So there's two. Uh, options within our portfolio. One is uh, Sierra plugged into Summon and 360, uh, and the other is the full solution you'll see after the, the tea break um, with uh, Alma Primo, other options within that platform, uh, and linking to third party systems. But we'll come on to that uh, after the break. Any other questions, comments? I'm going to ask the Any other comments? I don't see anything here. I don't see anything coming in line. Thank you, Caroline, for this. All right, thank you so much. Presentation, and I think those slides will be available, so we will share it for the attendees. So, yeah. Thank you so much. Uh, get, get in touch if you have any further questions, and uh, I'll be happy to help. Hopefully next year we'll see you in person. Hopefully, yes. I would like that. Yeah. So I, thank you so much. I'm friends. Um, it's I'm 20 saying. past 10. It is now 20 past 10. I, I think we can have a, a tea break. Um, if we come back a bit earlier than 10.45, we can finish earlier. So. I think if we want to make an ask you if you can come back at 10 35 so that we can speed up so you can be better if, if possible. Thank you, guys.
Uh, Larson, just for the Will remote participants, could, to my left. could you repeat the, the, the restart time? Because we're not hearing you so clearly. Ten thirty five. Ten thirty five. Okay. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
So Rebelli Benam. Okay. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we will we'll come in to the next lesson and the presenters to myself. And he will be presenting on the Alma Light Dimension System and give us, he will be giving us an overview of the Alma Light Dimension System and Alma Pusan and to give the overview of Alma and how Alma supports collection management, imaginator, and work with robots and the integration with other library systems and platforms. And have you all announced to myself? Hi, everybody. Can you hear me? So I can hear I, remotely. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Thank you very much. So first of all, thank you very much for inviting me uh, here today. I'm really glad to present uh, our last developments and our systems in this uh, really important meeting on our side. Uh, so uh, if everything is working, appropriately, you should be seeing uh, now my screen. As uh, in the agenda and as it was uh, mentioned, uh, we are going to uh, talk in this uh, first session about ALMA uh, with someone and uh, an overview of uh, how ALMA as an integrated library system is uh, working uh, for allowing you to uh, manage your collection, both physical, electric, electronic, and uh, digital, and uh, also how Alma can integrate with uh, other bits and pieces 
uh, that revolves around uh, your the library at your institution. So uh, first of all, I wanted uh, to show you uh, a little bit uh, the integration of uh, Alma with uh, Salmon. Uh, probably in most cases you have heard us talking about uh, Alma with uh, Primo V. Uh, but since both those uh, discoveries uh, lives under the Ex Libris Clarivate umbrella, uh, we have developed an integration of uh, Alma directly with uh, Salmon. So this is uh, an option and it, that is as valuable and as powerful as uh, the integration with uh, Primo V. Just to show you in brief, uh, here you can see in my screen uh, uh, an Alma platform. Later we will just go over the main functionalities of the system and uh, upon this uh, Alma we have a Salmon that lives uh, on top of this uh, Alma uh, website. So basically uh, everything that we do here on the library service platform will be reflected on the discovery experience. This is a really powerful architecture because it will allow you uh, to uh, provide the better, the best user experience for uh, your end users. Uh, now, uh, what can we see here? Uh, this as uh, someone, uh, it's uh, of course one of our demo environment, but it's uh, basically uh, the salmon that uh, you might already know and uh, or also been using at your institution. We have our facets here on the left side. We have our results that you can see here in the middle part with all the different options that uh, we have in uh, every single salmon uh, that goes from and the direct link to a PDF or the HTML version of the article, uh, our tags to highlight if a given um, article or a given resource is either peer reviewed, is open access, or the number of pages. So all the information about the single result here. And on the right side, we have all the different services that you can, can customize in uh, this third column that is uh, really uh, up to you to decide what uh, is the kind of information that you want to share with uh, your end users. So as you can see, this is basically a standard uh, salmon uh, web. I can either go on the full result page and here I would have all the different information about the article itself. And I can oh, start so all okay. I think it's everything. It's okay. Otherwise, please uh, just drop a message in the chat or uh, let us know what uh, if there are some specific questions. So uh, going from uh, here in Salmon, we can see that. Tommaso, I think you're muted. So I've been muted all along, or is just no, a... no, only the last uh, ah, like ten okay. seconds. <laughs> Way better. Thank you very much, Robert. Uh, so uh, what uh, I just did is that I logged into the system, and now that I'm logged in, I can uh, have via someone all the information as an overview or all the information specific to all my loans. Uh, these are the loans that I have made. Uh, as you can see, most of them are overdue. I also have my requests uh, as well as my finance field, and I can have uh, blocks uh, that have been generated by Alma directly showing up in the discovery system or uh, also messages that the library might have wanted to send me uh, to my specific account. 
Uh, so basically, we have all the advantages of uh, Salmon as the uh, really user-friendly user interface, the CDI that powers uh, all the uh, content that you are providing to your end user via the indexing at the article level and uh, that we are making. And uh, also in uh, this indexing, there are lots of information that we provide at the full text level for every article and that's in uh, the CDI. But on top of this, uh, we can really uh, interoperate with the library, having this My Library Card option that's a new option for all my users using Samba. Uh, beside this, the great advantage of using uh, Alma and Salmon all together is that in uh, this case, uh, the only uh, interface that we will need to use uh, to configure our uh, services is uh, Alma, because uh, Alma will uh, be the back office of the discovery uh, service. So everything is uh, completely merged into the same system. As we can see, actually, if I go here, this is the home page of uh, Alma, and in a minute we will see the different possibilities that are offered by this home page. Uh, but we can see here that we can go to the configuration side of Alma, and here we have our discovery option. And here is where we will be uh, able to manage all the different aspects of the discovery side and all the different views that we will be able to configure uh, via uh, Alma. Just as an example, uh, we can see here, and uh, this is the view that we were seeing uh, just a few seconds ago. And uh, here are the options that we are controlling for, from uh, Alma regarding someone configuration. Uh, for example, uh, how we want to see the brief record or the full record or the uh, overall customization package. This will allow us to really configure all the details of the look and feel and of the services that we want to provide to our end user. And this is done via uh, Alma. If I go uh, back uh, to this uh, Alma homepage, we will see uh, how Alma is working. Uh, basically, in uh, just uh, a line, uh, the uh, Alma service uh, will allow you to seamless, seamlessly uh, operate through the different uh, functional areas of your uh, library, as for example, acquisition, resource management, or fulfillment. Fulfillment is what uh, a new terminology that we have uh, that we are using to. Uh, really uh, take advantage of all Alma functionalities when dealing with the circulation. So just for uh, example, uh, via the fulfillment functional areas, we will be able to manage normal path of services. So check out and check in of the books. These are really uh, basic operation, but we will also be able uh, to uh, monitor all the requests and item processes or course reserves. Uh, that uh, are really important for every institution at the moment, or uh, resource sharing. So it goes beyond, beyond the standard uh, circulation uh, to really take advantage of all the functionality that we have embedded in the system and uh, fulfill all the needs of your end users. Now, uh, as we were seeing here, we will be able to access the different functional areas and uh, Alma is a, a workflow based platform. So, for example, when we are uh, dealing with a purchase order, we will try to automate as much as possible uh, all the processes that will allow uh, the uh, librarian to manage, uh, for example, a purchase request, convert this purchase request into a purchase order line, and then send it. Uh, as a purchase order to the uh, provider. So all this will be automated as much as possible and will be done and configured according to your specific needs. Uh, but uh, on top of this um, automation, Alma will uh, also is also able uh, to proactively send 
uh, alert to uh, notify uh, librarians uh, when their intervention is needed. Uh, basically, the main tool that we use to do this is this uh, task widget. Uh, Alma is based on uh, roles, so every uh, librarian, when we, he will be uh, logging into the platform, uh, he will uh, be assigned the privileges and the user roles to assess exactly what he needs to assess in order to uh, uh, to, to uh, <coughs> do his day-to-day -day activities. Uh, so, for example, if one librarian is just oh, working on acquisition, uh, he will just see this acquisition menu. And uh, this goes for a librarian that's working on resources, or uh, in this case that uh, you are just uh, looking at, uh, I am logged in as an administrator, so I'm uh, really able to see all the different bits, bits and pieces of uh, the system. Depending on my role, I will have access to the different functional areas, uh, but also I will be able to receive these specific notifications. Uh, in this case, for example, if I was uh, if I were a librarian uh, working with electronic resources, I will receive notification on resources that need to be uh, uh, activated. Uh, and in this case, all this notification comes with a direct link. Uh, and uh, if I'm clicking on this link, I will be able to start the workflow of electronic activation. So we have automation on one side, but also we have a proactive notification of uh, when I should start working on a specific uh, task that requires my input. It will require my input um, based on the rule uh, that you might have a setup or uh, based on uh, information that only a librarian will be able to provide. This uh, organization, this structure of the system that uh, is, uh, is assessed via roles and privileges is also reflected here on the top level of the uh, Alma user interface in this permanent search box. This is an interesting example because here you can see uh, that I can run my search and manage my collection accordingly on uh, all titles level. So basically I will be able to see uh, everything that's in my collection, but also I am uh, able to uh, really uh, work specifically on uh, physical titles, electronic titles, and if I have Alma D, the digital management uh, part of Alma activated, also on the digital collection. So everything is handled uh, via the same platform. Beside what is just the uh, repository, we also have access, according to our roles, as I was mentioning, to the different uh, uh, more administrative uh, part of the system. So in this case, I could be searching on order lines, vendors, uh, users, or reading list. And it's uh, really important because here we can just see at a first look how all the information that I have in the system is consolidated inside uh, Alma. Uh, without the need to go outside to any other system, I will be able to search uh, financial information, user information or resource sharing information. Having all this information just one click away uh, in a, a Alma will allow to really streamline uh, my day-to-day -day activities. Now we can uh, have a look at the search, in, at the one example of a search in Alma uh, to see how the system is uh, working. I can search at an old title level, uh, as you can see, my search can be run to uh, many different specific indexes, and you can also configure the indexes uh, that you want to use. Uh, but let's start with something uh, really uh, easy. So, for example, Mark Twain. Just something that uh, will allow us 
to have a look at the uh, overall collection. Now here you can see uh, that I'm, uh, I have run my search at the old title level, and in this case, just the very first results uh, will indicate me that for this title, I have three sure. different options. I have uh, two physical holdings, I have one electronic portfolio that's not been uh, activated, and you can see that there's one copy, but the dot is in grayed out, and also we have also one digital representation. Oh, okay. If I want to, if I want to expand uh, this information, I just click here on the expand option, and I can see specifically that I have one portfolio that's not active at the moment. I have two physical holdings, one in the main library, in the main location, and one in the media location, and just this one is available. And I also have one digital uh, representation of the book that's associated with the, this specific uh, bibliographic record. From here, I can uh, really uh, move across all the different options that the system is providing me. I can start with uh, assessing the uh, metadata information about this uh, book, and I can do this in many different ways. I can just uh, go to edit record, which will uh, take me to the metadata environment where I can work on the data themselves, or I just, I just can click on the record. If I click on the record, I can see a read-only version of the record. This is a standard mark 21 in this case. But I can also click on bib frame, and uh, this would uh, allow the system to automatically translate uh, the record in a bib frame format. So basically, uh, providing me uh, all the information to work on this uh, brand new standard uh, that is uh, starting to be uh, used uh, by the library. Also, from here. I can at any time either edit directly the record or push the record to this MD, the metadata environment editor, where we uh, work uh, with metadata. Just to show you, I can access the uh, record in uh, edit mode. And this is uh, the cataloging environment that we are working with in uh, Alma. There are a couple of things that I think are really uh, interesting uh, regarding this environment in uh, Alma, and that will allow you uh, to uh, really work at the metadata level uh, in managing your collection. On one side, we can see that here we have the record, and to make it really even easier to work with this uh, metadata, we have different options. Uh, as you can see here, I have this uh, three dot icon on the right side of the screen. And if I click on this three dot, now I am in the 245 field, I can get the field information. This will uh, split the metadata editor in uh, two separate columns, and it will pull uh, on the second column that we have just created. And uh, this information that comes directly uh, from uh, the Library of Congress regarding this specific uh, th this specific field. So when cataloging, I will be able to really have all the information that I need to do this properly. Also, for those records like the leader or the 008, I can open the uh, record in a tab in a form editor. This will allow me to change the information on the specific position in the record uh, via drop down menus, making all the cataloging uh, really more streamlined. Always regarding cataloging, we can see that we have warnings. The system automatically pulls information, checks the record, and pulls information, uh, just alerting me uh, if uh, there's some information missing in uh, the system. Uh, on the other hand, what's really interesting is that uh, uh, from here, 
So now I am in cataloging. Uh, you will be able to start uh, working on adding new inventory, and this could be both physical, electronic, or digital. Uh, but also, thanks to the uh, integration with the acquisition model, I can from here, as well as from the search that I did before, or from, for example, a search on an external catalog, I can start an ordering workflow. This just shows how the system is uh, really integrated and all the different bits and pieces of uh, Alma will be able to are actually not even connected, are unified in the same platform. So here we can see that, for example, from the metadata environment, I was able to start working on creating a PO line. This is a nice example, actually, because you will see as all the information that is stored in uh, Alma uh, will allow you uh, to uh, create, for example, an order uh, without the need of checking in different system or having a look at the information that you might have stored in Excel files or in a SharePoint all over uh, your the ecosystem, the software ecosystem of your library. So I can take it from here. We have seen that I was cataloging something. I wanted to order a new copy of the book, for example, and I can just click on the chart that we have seen before. And from there, uh, start creating my PO line. The system will be recommended uh, me some uh, PO line types. Uh, it recognizes that it's a book, so it can uh, ask me if this is an ebook, a print book, or other kind of uh, material. But also, I have other different options. These, of course, are really configurable, and in this case, we have activated every single option in our uh, demo environment. But for the sake for the for this demo, uh, we can just uh, order a new print book. I will create my PO line, select a uh, print book one time. I will assign this PO line to a specific library, and this is all I need to do to create a new PO line. So from here, I will go to click on create, and all the information about this new PO line. Uh, is uh, starting to be created. I have the book, as you can see, uh, the book cover has been pulled uh, by the system and it's been already added uh, to uh, my record. Uh, I have information about the material type, information about the purchase method that, can, that I can configure. So in this case, we will do a standard purchase but this could also be a gift, an exchange, or any other acquisition method that you wanted to configure. The system automatically assigned a barcode. And here is where I really take advantage of all the different information that I have in Alma. As you can see here, for example, I have, of course, to add my uh, vendor information. And uh, in this case, I can directly from the PO line have access uh, to uh, the vendors that I have activated in uh, this uh, Alma uh, demo site. Uh, this is some vendors that we have created. As you can see, just by clicking here on select a value, I will be able to a sliding pen uh, to assess uh, all the information and that we have on vendors. I can uh, check one of those vendors. There are different options that we have created. As you can see, I can access to all of those. In this case, let's pick uh, ProQuest. And once I have added this one, I can, uh, this is one of the one that I have recently used. I have all uh, the data that I need from the provider already associated with. Uh, I can add a uh, price. This is, of course, uh, but uh, one other uh, option that's really important is that just from here, I can add a fund. <coughs> just as before, I can, with one click, access all the information about the fund 
that I have configured in my uh, Alma interface. Let me see, because I don't remember what are the ones that I have configured here. Uh, so I will check it via another uh, option. But here are all the information that we have and that we need to uh, uh, actually create and send this uh, order. And this uh, goes from a print books, but we have the same uh, workflow for uh, also uh, electronic or digital content. All this information that we have seen uh, here is actually stored in this acquisition infrastructure menu. It's in acquisition and here you can see that we have our vendors, we have our fonts and we have our licenses. For vendors, for example, it's a really nice and important that we have, let's take ProQuest for example, that we uh, can uh, assess all the information about the vendor itself, but uh, also we can with just one click go to the different PO lines that we have. So as you can see, it's really a seamless integration that will allow me to go from uh, the vendor to all the different order that we have placed with the vendor or, or sorry, or to all the different invoices and uh, that we have created. So we know exactly how much we have spent with each of those vendors. And at the same level, we can configure, for example, uh, our sushi account. It's really easy. Uh, we select if we want to configure an account that's a counter four or counter five, depending on what the vendor is supporting. And uh, from here, we just in input all the information that we need and the system will be able to retrieve automatically all the usage information. Now it's really clear that if we have invoice information and we have usage data information, uh, we can uh, out of the box create our cost per use information uh, for every material that you have in your collection. And uh, the same goes the same structure and the same um, richness of information that we have seen in uh, vendors. We can see it here in uh, funds and uh, ledgers. This is a pyramidal structure that will allow us uh, to recreate the accounting structure that you have at your uh, institution. And uh, uh, here uh, we can see, for example, let me pick, I don't know, one of these funds. Uh, and uh, every one of these fonts like this, for example, we can see that we have all the information on the fund itself. Uh, here we don't have uh, a budget for this year, uh, but uh, we can uh, see that we have the uh, who is owning the fund, all the different libraries inside your institution that will be able to assess this fund and a real-time fund balance that will allow us to know exactly what are and uh, what is the availability of this fund and uh, throughout the year and same as vendors we can have a look at all the transactions that have been done using this fund this was not used recently so we don't have anything but you uh, can understand how really everything uh, is stored in the system and you will be able uh, to uh, clearly see all the transaction and all the data that you are, have uh, available in your institution. Now, uh, we have seen this for vendors and funds and ledger, but there's another uh, really important uh, area in this acquisition infrastructure. And uh, these are the licenses. Uh, as we have seen and as we have commented before, uh, Alma is uh, able uh, to manage uh, not only print, but also it has a full uh, set of functionalities that will allow you to uh, manage all the different parts of the system and that are dealing with electronic resources. Licenses, of course, are uh, really uh, important when uh, dealing with these uh, kind of resources. And uh, here you can see how the system 
will be able to store all your licenses information. Here you can see an example of a license. Uh, this is the progress one. We will know when it was activated and we can see all the different license terms that have been mapped. And also we can choose if we want to uh, show in a Prim or in Salmon those license terms to the end users. Uh, some of those license, license terms, sorry, of course, might be a bit too complicated for the normal end user, but it could be interesting to understand, for example, if we can make a print copy of an electronic journal. And always from here, we can see that uh, I can have a look at all the PO lines that have been created with this license or all the inventory that have been bought uh, with this uh, license. So basically all this information is really uh, one step away uh, for uh, you to uh, be able to consult this. Now we have seen an example of uh, the way we uh, can kick off a workflow for buying a new print book, but the same goes for electronic title of coll or collection. Plus, when we are dealing with electronic uh, content, we have the possibility of taking advantage of uh, our community zone. So let me just search for an example. Let's do progress. Something really uh, basic. Now we will see that when I run a search for progress, uh, I will uh, run it in a parallel into a separate um, sources of information. On one side, I will be uh, searching on my institution. So basically uh, here, every I can see everything that's been uh, activated at okay. the institution. And as an example, when I search for progress, I can see just in one look, uh, this is a progress nursing dissertation new platform uh, collection, and I can even go directly to the order that I've generated this acquisition. So again, all the information is really seamlessly available for you. But on top of this institution tab, we also can see this community tab. And here is where I would run a search in our community zone. This is the central knowledge base that will uh, allow me uh, to uh, search in all the content that the different providers are uh, activating and are sending uh, to uh, Clarivate and that we are normalizing and uh, keeping updated for you. As you can see, for example, here in the community zone, the number of electronic collection bumps up uh, because there's not only what I have activated at my institution, but that here there's everything that we have in uh, Alma. I can see that there are some collections like this, and I can see that this collection, if I just wave over this uh, house icon, I see can this is a collection from the community zone that is uh, actually been active at my institution. But in the same way, I can find a collection like this, a progress learning uh, literature uh, that's available in our uh, central knowledge base, but it's uh, not been uh, activated in uh, our institution. I have choose progress, but the number of provider is pretty wide and it covers all of the different providers that you might have at your institution. I can also see uh, in this example right from the start that this collection, it was created back in 2020, uh, but the last modification uh, that has been made to this collection uh, was uh, on the 29th of September. So basically yesterday is, was the last time we have received from inform some information from ProQuest and that we have uh, updated this collection according to the provider of software. When uh, you as a librarian are looking at a collection like this one, uh, you will need to start evaluating uh, 
for example, the possible purchase of this uh, collection. And uh, here you have a couple of options. As you can see here in the more action, you can directly start an order, and that would put us back to the creation of a PO line that we have seen before. But even before starting an order, you will be able, for example, to see uh, all the portfolios that are included in this collection. This is the information that actually we receive from the providers and we are keeping updated uh, for you. As an example, uh, here we have all the different portfolios and uh, you will be able to uh, have a look at those portfolio, but also you will be able uh, to eventually download this list to work on this list uh, offline. Is it okay with the sound? I can hear. But I think there's hear. one person who can't. Ah, okay, it's like just like just like a local uh, issue. Just a couple of things on uh, the content management and uh, on the uh, acquisition. Uh, of course, we can download this list, and it's really important information. Uh, but these are nine and nine thousand uh, articles. So uh, it might be a little bit complicated uh, to uh, actually go through all this information. And for this reason, if we go and have a peek at the resources menu, we can see that we have an overlap and collection analysis tool. This will allow uh, your institution just in a couple of quick clicks uh, to compare one uh, and to run a, an analysis that will allow you to compare collection. So basically, you select a collection and you will be able to compare it with what you have. And actually, uh, understanding uh, exactly what you are subscribed to and what right. this right. new collection would no, uh, allow you to add to your, uh, to your uh, local uh, repository. So this is really a powerful tool in the evaluating part of the system. And uh, with those two tools, if you want, to, of course, we can go more in depth, um, but this is just for the sake of uh, this presentation today. Uh, with uh, the counter information that we have at the vendor level and the overlap analysis that we can run right from the start when evaluating a new resource, we can see how we really uh, will allow you to follow through all the workflows that are associated with electronic material, starting with evaluation, uh, you then can go through the activation in the system and uh, the same goes for Salmon and for Primo, but it's really interesting because it's uh, you will just need to activate the resource in Alma and this will be uh, made available uh, with a few clicks uh, directly on the, the link resolver that's integrated into Alma and on uh, the uh, end uh, user interface, whether this is Salmon or Primo. So you have evaluation, you have the usage, and uh, you have mm, providing the access to this content. And at the end of the subscription period, for example, you will be able, thanks to the uh, usage data and uh, the uh, financial data that we have in the system, to run your cost per use analysis and uh, be able to really um, understand uh, the value uh, and the usage of some specific collection and uh, take a data-driven decision on uh, if and how to renew uh, this content. T Tommaso, we have a couple of questions in the chat yes. uh, uh, in this kind of area. Um, yeah, one is, is it possible to perform collection analysis by subject? And the other is, um, can Alma provide usage reports or analytics for vendors who are not counter 405 compliant? Okay, so I'll uh, go the other way around and starting from counter because uh, <laughs> I feel I was uh, talking about usage. Uh, we have seen uh, that we have in vendors the possibility of configuring uh, Sushi uh, reports. So when we are talking about Sushi, let's say Gale, for example, when we are talking about Sushi, uh, this is an automatic harvesting protocol that will allow you to ingest counter four or five reports. Uh, the other possibility that you have 
is actually uh, uploading a file. Uh, in this case, if the, count, the vendor is not counter compliant, you will need to do some uh, transformation before uh, uploading the file to make the Excel basically look like a counter report. Once you have done this, you will be able to import this information and then uh, take it from there to uh, get your usage and cost per use data. So there's a possibility, but if it's not counter four or five, this will not be done uh, automatically. And uh, if I'm correct, uh, you were mentioning uh, an overlap uh, analysis for subjects, right? A collection analysis by subject. OK, so in uh, this case, what uh, what would you want to do? There are different uh, options uh, here. When you are running a new analysis, uh, you can uh, run these uh, look up titles. Uh, so uh, basically, if you have a title list uh, that you might have created uh, somewhere else, uh, you will be able to uh, upload an Excel file uh, with, for example, a benchmark of titles for a specific uh, subject uh, that you want to compare uh, with your collection and uh, run this comparison be between this uploaded Excel file and your institution zone. So everything that's inside your collection. And this would be taking this from an external source. Uh, also, if you want to create and have a look at everything that you have in a specific subject uh, inside uh, your collection, you will be uh, easily uh, able to do this uh, because of uh, Alma uh, Analytics. Alma Analytics mm -hmm. is the analytical platform that's uh, available through Alma, no, co no added cost. It comes with the subscription and is, uh, will allow you to basically uh, go over all the different aspects and all the information that is stored in Alma regarding your institution. Uh, one of the interesting things uh, that's uh, available to this through this uh, option is that uh, you can create your own analysis, for example. And uh, when you're working on uh, the different uh, subject uh, areas, you can take, for example, uh, the e-inventory, so everything that you have at an electronic level. Here you will be able to uh, add all the different parameters uh, that you want to use when creating an analytic report regarding your e-inventory, but of course there is also the, the same possibility goes for physical titles. Uh, I was just checking with this example. Here you can see all the different uh, options that you might want to choose. So, for example, you can do an analysis for the portfolios that have been created within a certain date or there are part of, with, of a specific collection. But if I scroll down, you can see that even in Alma, all the different information I can uh, add as a filtering parameters, DUI or LC classification, or even bibliographic details. So uh, you will be uh, able to have all your collection analyzed for specific subject areas. And uh, let's say we have the possibility of running overlaps on one side, but also on cutting down through your collection in order to uh, understand exactly uh, what you have uh, for a given subject. And also one really interesting thing is that all this information that's available in uh, Alma Analytics, uh, I must say that this probably uh, needs a really uh, in-depth um, session, but just to provide you an idea, an idea. All this uh, information in Alma Analytics can be exported, so you can use this report that you have created to benchmark your institution about, for example, neighboring institution, or to understand uh, from a collection development perspective, uh, what you have at your institution and what other institution near you uh, might have. And that could be uh, interesting in order to understand uh, what direction you want to take when uh, working on uh, 
acquire material for your institution. Does it make uh, sense? Just let me ask the audience if they have any questions, sir. Before you proceed. Um, there was a hand up there. just there, but I missed it again. Because um. I think we have come to the Q&A session, part of the session. I'm, uh, if we want to take any yeah, other questions. There's one more, que one more question in the chat um i'm not sure i fully understand it so maybe uh audrey uh, who asked the question could can unmute herself and explain but it's when a transfer has happened between funds is it possible to see how much was transferred from other funds in the allocation so uh audrey i don't know, know if you want to unmute yourself to uh, good day, colleagues. Hi. Um, we often transfer funds when other funds have depleted. But then when we run reports, it would look like the original allocation is the latest total of the fund. Now it's impossible to see what was allocated in the first place when we allocated the, the budget for the funds. So now how do we tell how much was was transferred lately and see what was transferred in the beginning? So, Is it clear uh, now? Uh, I, I guess so. So I, I'm trying to, uh, uh, what, what system are you working with? We're using Alma. Okay, perfect. Uh, so we have you have a transfer fund functionality that will allow you, depending on your role, uh, to transfer uh, a given amount from one fund uh, to the other. And when working on a fund, I think uh, to be able to track down all the specific information on the movement of budget between two different funds, the best option is uh, seen. Uh, to go through uh, Alma uh, analytics, uh, but to be able to, to honestly to uh, answer with full details to this uh, question, we should uh, see how the setup at your institution is done and uh, to understand uh, what the best way uh, to track those data. Uh, it's possible to track exactly uh, how much money went from one fund to the other, uh, but how to do that on your live Alma implementation, uh, we should see how this is configured in your institution. Okay, I see what you're saying. Any other question? Um, yeah. I guess there may be more questions when you see the front end, the student front end, which is primo. Okay. So <laughs> Well, because uh, I my name, my name is Wilson Clay from the University of the Ridge. Uh, I have a question with our positions. We have a problem. One of the things it does is it automatically suppresses the record of the application site and it automatically puts the item in transit from the, from the application site. We want to know how can we solve that problem. And the second question is, what role does one need for the scanning of items? So which role do you, uh, you are using Alma, I understand. Sorry. I get more 
Yes, so we do use. Um, okay, okay, perfect. Uh, so uh, the role, uh, the exact role uh, that uh, you would need to be able to this to uh, access to this uh, scan. Uh, items uh, functionality, uh, we can come back uh, to you because there are many different roles that will uh, actually uh, activate these functionalities in uh, your uh, system. Uh, it, which was the use case? Sorry. Sorry, I'm not hearing so great. Can, can somebody repeat into the into the microphone? So I think we're only hearing the um, we're only hearing the audio from the speakers in the room, not from the mic. I think that might be the problem. All right. Larson, can you? Try repeating the question again. Can you check on the on the chat University of Zululand? If you watch the question. Yeah. Can can I repeat the question again? Yes, please. That's much better. Yeah. Can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Please go ahead. Yeah. 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 yeah, the question the was, question was I guess you said you will, you, you will get back to us. The question was, what are the roles that one needs to, to use the functionality of scanning the item? And the first question was, on the acquisition module, the system automatically put the record, uh, suppress the record automatically. And then secondly, when they put in the item, the system automatically puts the item in transit. OK, so I, I, I think uh, I'm sorry. Again, we would need to uh, see exactly uh, how your uh, Alma is uh, set up. Uh, I can um, we can uh, generally speaking, uh, there are many roles that will allow you to uh, assess these uh, scan uh, item uh, functionalities. Of course, we have general information about user uh, roles in uh, Alma, uh, but uh, and here you can see uh, the list of all the, the different uh, roles in uh, the system and their privileges. Uh, but uh, I think that probably uh, the best way to understand what you need to do and uh, how you need to do that, it's uh, uh, via uh, uh, engaging with our customer success counterpart or uh, uh, if you can specify what is the workflow that you're thinking about, uh, we can internally uh, trying to uh, understand what are the role that better fit this uh, option. Regarding uh, the uh, suppress uh, option, I know that in Alma you can suppress uh, items and titles based on uh, the workflow that they are in. So uh, probably you have activated an uh, option that will uh, suppress uh, items or new titles when they are in the acquisition department. After that, uh, they uh, need to be transferred uh, to uh, the proper circulation that's to be then made visible. Uh, this option of moving uh, items from the acquisition department through uh, the circulation desk department is uh, configurable, uh, so you can have uh, items going 
directly to the circulation desk when they are received. Uh, but again, this is a matter of configuration and we should be looking at your uh, specific ALMA implementation because there are many different options. And I don't know if you have discussed this with our implementation consultant, uh, but uh, of course we can uh, provide you with uh, some uh, workflows that will tailor uh, to your specific needs. Because basically, when you are receiving a new, uh, uh, a new, some new content, you will be receiving this in this receiving and invoicing uh, workflow. But here, you will be able to decide if you want these uh, these new items to uh, go directly uh, to the circulation desk, or if you need to transfer it to the circulation desk because we as you we may assume that those. Uh, acquisition and the circulation desk are in two different uh, places inside the institution. And if you want to make these uh, articles uh, unsuppressed for the end user in uh, Primo or someone, of course. I hope that might have helped, even though I, from this Alma um, implementation, I can't go through the specific uh, of uh, and the rules and configuration that you have at your institution. Audrey, you raised your hand. Yeah. Um, good day again, colleagues. My name is Bongi, also from the University of Zululand. I wanted to find out if the system does allow inter-branch loans, and if that is possible, how do we do it? Basically, uh, branch inside your own institution. Alma will uh, allow, generally speaking, uh, Alma will allow um, loans and uh, circulation uh, inside there there is uh, let's say a tree like uh, configuration inside the system uh, you will have inside your uh, alma institution different libraries and you will be able to uh, specify the relationship among those libraries so who is circulating for who and uh, inside the circulation, uh, you will be able to specify is, for example, one student at the graduate library will be able to check in or check out material that belongs to the law library, or if uh, he needs to go directly to the second library to check in and check out material. On top of this, there's a second level of uh, organization where you can uh, group and different libraries into branches. Uh, those in the library, in the ALMA terminology, are called uh, campuses. And uh, uh, you will be able to select and define uh, circulation rules uh, for those uh, campuses in order to make this interbranch material and uh, interbranch circulation. And this goes to a really great depth of granularity, and you will be able to define um, rules for, for example, um, requesting material, rules for circulation, circulating material, or, or finally, uh, you will also be able to define some times that need to be accounted for when uh, a specific uh, resource, for example, a book, is being moved from a campus to the other campus, or it's been returned uh, from a campus and need to go uh, to the other campus. Finally, uh, Alma uh, will allow you to uh, deal with the resource sharing. So this is uh, uh, circulation uh, among completely different institutions. Uh, in this case, we have um, standard resources that come right off the gate from uh, Alma to define uh, for example, Rota templates and all the partners you're working with, but we also have 
specific services like Rapid ILL for document delivery or Rapido for uh, ILL that will uh, allow you uh, to really configure and uh, take uh, advantage of all uh, ALMA functionalities and all the community of institutions that are working with ALMA and are sharing materials. So clarity. Um, thank you for that. But I just wanted some clarity for inter loans, uh, inter branch loans. Do we have to do some kind of uh, configuration in the system for this to be possible? You would mean you would need to configure the relationship within your libraries and eventually define campuses if there are uh, different uh, if there are groups of uh, libraries. And uh, that behaves similarly, and you want those uh, libraries to be grouped into campuses in order to streamline uh, the overall uh, resource sharing between the branches. Okay, thank you. It was a pleasure. I think I, I get to see. So if this uh, is okay from the library, uh, from the ALMA uh, side, I would move uh, on to the third session, uh, talking about uh, Primo as uh, a discovery tool and how this can be configured in ALMA and uh, really the interaction between uh, ALMA, uh, Primo and uh, the new services that we are uh, developing around this integration. I just need a couple of minutes to close down these uh, ALMA sites and open uh, new ones. So I will uh, stop sharing and take just uh, a second uh, to log into this uh, other system. Uh, if you have any question or any remark or uh, housekeeping uh, comments that you need to do, uh, I'll be uh, back with you in uh, two minutes. Stop. Let's close this. I'm all. Almost there, sorry for this. You. Okay, now I'm back to sharing uh, my screen. You should be seeing uh, an Alma. It's another one, but and let me put this one in English because I have it in Italian. Okay, so we moved from uh, purplish uh, Alma to uh, blue uh, Alma, just uh, because of the configuration of those two systems. And uh, in this case, uh, what we have 
uh, here it's uh, another um, another discovery in this case we are working uh, with this discovery here we will be pointed to uh, this uh, primo ve site uh, here and uh, during uh, this uh, session we will be talking uh, about uh, the interaction uh, about uh, of uh, alma and the primo discovery tool uh, so how this and uh, front end of the system for your uh, end user will be able to connect the users to your uh, the services and the collection at your institution how we can configure this and uh, how uh, we are uh, really working in uh, providing a uh, better uh, user experience uh, every day for your uh, end users. So uh, basically, uh, some of uh, the things that you will be uh, seeing uh, here uh, are just are the same that we have been uh, looking at in uh, the other ALMA. Uh, in uh, this case, uh, we do have as a discovery uh, Primo V. And uh, we are uh, developing some uh, new functionalities that have already been uh, activated in Primo V and that will come uh, at the beginning H1, no, sorry, uh, Q1 of uh, next uh, year into uh, someone, but we can have a sneak peek of uh, how this new functionality looks like in uh, Primo V. We can see uh, that here again, we have the discovery section of the uh, configure for the configuration of the discovery. This looks like what we have in uh, Salmon. In this case, I have it embedded here in my uh, left column and I can go to my configure views. We have uh, different views. Now we are uh, working uh, with uh, this one specifically. And this one is uh, the one that we are seeing uh, here. From the look and feel perspective, we have uh, some switches that we have made on uh, Primo, and then we can uh, go over uh, these uh, little differences and uh, how uh, those uh, little changes may help your end user. And uh, uh, finally, let me close this one. Uh, we can also have a look at this research assistant. It's a beta version of uh, our AI-driven uh, uh, research assistant, of course, uh, that we have already launched in a Primo V and that will be available in the first quarter of next year also for uh, someone users. Uh, now, uh, where should we uh, start? Uh, I think that the very first thing that it's worth uh, saying is that uh, I didn't mention it before with someone because I was uh, just uh, I just wanted it to show uh, here uh, because some of the functionalities of course are uh, the same. Uh, it's uh, interesting to see how I can uh, look uh, for a title. Uh, here we can look at this one. And being this a uh, more discovery oriented uh, section uh, we can uh, have a look at some of the important functionalities uh, that arise from the fact that uh, the library service platform and the uh, end user uh, the front front end of the system meaning the discovery system are unified in the same uh, platform here we can see a search that i have run uh, I have searched for Bologna. If you have uh, paid, a, if you can, uh, you can spot that in this case, uh, the end user, uh, the Alma user experience is uh, a little bit different for a search in all titles because in this case, we have activated in Alma 
the new old title uh, search functionalities. And uh, this is a new uh, information, a new layout and uh, that we are developing and that really enhance the information that you might be looking for uh, via uh, Alma and the overall uh, user accessibility. Uh, same as before, I have my information for for this record. I have my information for physical uh, copies, for electronic copies, and for digital copies. I can uh, have a look at this at this level, uh, but I can uh, also have a look, for example, at the items. Here I can see in uh, this uh, summary that I have uh, two items and uh, that one is available and both are stored in my general location. If I then click here, I can have a sliding pen and that will allow me uh, to see the specific information on those uh, items without ever leaving uh, the search that I was doing at the old title level. So here in items, I can see that uh, for example, I have one item that is in place and one item that is not available because it is still in acquisition. And uh, this is something similar to what we have discussed about the possibility of having some suppressed information on uh, the discovery service. In this case, it isn't suppressed, but it's not uh, available. The same goes that we are looking here for items. Uh, I can look at it for electronic portfolio and can have all this information. What is uh, interesting is that uh, from here, from Alma, I can with just one click go to the display in discovery option. So the two systems are connected and lives on the same platform. So every time I uh, make my changes or I am working as a librarian in a specific title with just one click, I can go to the discovery. Here I am in uh, Primo, and I can see how the end user will be uh, having access to all the information that I am providing. We can see here that I have my book. I know that uh, this there is a digital version, and in this case, uh, I set up this uh, uh, this uh, the possibility of uh, opening the uh, book via the universal viewer and also i know that they have electronic uh, availability and uh, information about the physical collections uh, there's a question i will take it here uh, directly if alma and salmon uh, are working in uh, the same way as uh, alma and uh, primo v there are minor differences those come back to the look and feel of the discovery or some workflows and uh, that you might want to active want to set up to uh, uh, this is in Italian sorry uh, that you might want to set up when uh, activating services uh, but basically the uh, overall experience is uh, the same if you're working with the Alma or some minor tweaks uh, but same end user experience. So here, sorry, I'm now back to uh, English. Uh, you can see exactly uh, all the information that you have been working on on a librarian from the student or uh, end user perspective. And the other thing that we have here is that all the changes that I would be doing on uh, the uh, uh, BIB record and that have been pulled inside Primo V in this detailed uh, section of the result are uh, connected in real time but it, <clears throat> with the changes that I'm doing in uh, Alma. So if I change something here, I will be able uh, to see these changes directly in uh, the discovery. And this is really important because it will allow you to provide a more streamlined uh, service. You know what you're doing and you can take a look if what you are doing is uh, properly reflected into the uh, end user experience for the end in the experience for the end users. So this is uh, really important. And uh, if we have a look at this uh, result, we can see that we can configure 
a viability for digital content. And we can have all the information for uh, circulation, so physical content. And it's also interesting because I am now logged in as myself. You can see it here. And since the system uh, knows uh, who I am, it will not only show me the real time availability of uh, the book, of this specific book. So I know that uh, there are two copies, that one is av available, sorry, and there are no requests attached to this item. I also will know that uh, if I were to uh, check out this book, the terms of use that apply to my user group, to my user when uh, checking out this specific kind of content will allow me to have this uh, loaned for four days. So I not only know the availability, but I also know the specific policies that uh, are uh, attached to my end user. And uh, on top of the policies, I will also be able uh, to get uh, advantage of all the services uh, that the library is offering. So basically, uh, according to the rules that you will set up at your institution, I might be able to request this uh, book to ask for a digitization of a part of all the book according to the rules that you have set in place, or resource sharing, or for example, a purchase request. Let's click this one just to give you an example. Uh, if my user group is allowed to make purchase requests, I just need to uh, click on the option. I will have all the form pre-populated for me and based on the information that we have on uh, Primo. And I will just need uh, to associate this with the library. That's the library that I'm a user of. And I will send the purchase request. As soon as I will uh, do this, uh, the librarian will uh, receive an alert in their task menu. So here there will be a new purchase request and they will be able to uh, work on this purchase request via the purchase request functionalities inside Alma. As you can see here, I can manage all the incoming purchase requests. Just a second, sorry. I can manage all the incoming purchase requests, or uh, I can create a new purchase request. If an end user comes to the circulation desk and asks me to create this purchase request, I can do this easily in the system. So we have all the information on the actual copy of uh, one specific book, and I have all the services that are available uh, from the library. This is at the single uh, uh, result level. Uh, we can now take, uh, like, uh, let's call it a step back and uh, see how my results are displayed into the system. This is the Primo landing page. Of course, I can configure everything regarding this page and I can do that in uh, Alma. Later, I will show you uh, how this is uh, really simple to do that. I am uh, logged in, so the system knows my roles and privileges, and I can run my uh, search. So let's start with something like this. Uh, we can see that uh, the interface is pretty similar to what we are looking inside Salmon. In this case, for example, we do not have this uh, third column, uh, but uh, all the kind of facets that we have are uh, more or less the uh, same. And we do have a couple of different options. Uh, on uh, the tweak result part, on uh, the uh, filter side, uh, the user experience is uh, basically the same with the same set of um, facets that will allow me uh, to filter, for example, for peer reviewed or open access material. We know that these are really important nowadays. And the same as a someone, but just in another place, we have the possibility of seeing those tags 
that will tell me if a given material is peer reviewed or uh, open access. I have my availability uh, filters, uh, the authors, the creators. I can filter for resource type, for example. And, uh, and this works the same as Salmon. I can either include or exclude a given parameter. I have searches for collection. If I am always looking, for example, at, I don't know, uh, academic search complete, I can filter down this material for everything that we have indexed from a specific database or for subjects. And if I go here, we have this same uh, possibility of having like a brief uh, summary about what I am searching for <coughs> directly on top of the results. So if an end user, for example, a first year student is just starting to work on a specific topic, they will be able to understand where they will be moving. And again, same as someone, I am now looking for an acronym, this brain-derived neurotrophic factor, and I will be able to uh, uh, insert in my search both BDNF and the uh, acronym, uh, the full-on uh, acronym, that's uh, the underlying full-on uh, acronyms. And uh, same as someone, I will be able to uh, define if I just want to search for BDNF or I want also the results from uh, brain derived neurotrophic factor in the system. And now we get to uh, the list of results itself. Here, just a couple of notes we can see that uh, we have our uh, link to the PDF or a link to the HTML version of the article. In this case, uh, those results are mainly electronic, but I have real-time availability for uh, print resources. And uh, I can uh, go and uh, create uh, what we call a citation trail. This is an option that we have uh, both in uh, Primo B and in Salmon, and that it will allow us uh, to find the sources that are citing this article or that are cited by this article. And I can move around my citation path and I can create all this information. So I can start uh, from this article and then have a look at what's cited by this article, what's cited by this specific article, and move across all this information. This is a really uh, powerful tool because uh, it will allow you to move around all the pieces of research that have created a given um, article or a given review, for example. When I'm working with uh, Primo B, I can define here my scopes. So where am I searching? I can narrow down scopes. <coughs> in order to search, for example, just in the library catalog and the CDI, in digital resources, or in special collection that you might want to define. And this goes for uh, customized scopes or customized facets that you are able to create inside the system. Another important feature of uh, Primo V is the fact that you can personalize your results. You can see that my results have been uh, actually personalized because I have this personalization option activated. And I just filter down uh, a couple of disciplines to look uh, inside the result for this search. And this is something that I will be able to uh, customize at every given moment. So if I want to add uh, uh, beside biology and chemistry, if I want to add, for example, uh, psychology, I can do it at uh, any time, and those changes will be saved. Also, I can uh, turn on and off this personalization at every given moment. So it's uh, really uh, helpful to uh, move around all these different uh, sets of results. 
we have seen uh, this as a primo uh, end user interface, but uh, as I was mentioning, uh, this will uh, also uh, all the functionalities and all the look and feel of uh, the system that I am looking inside uh, Primo at the moment is also customizable. Uh, is all uh, everything is customizable on the Alma side. So all the rules that will define what services I'm available uh, to access to, or all uh, the rules that will define what are the facets that I can use in the system are clearly manageable inside Alma. I just need to go to discovery, configure views. Here we have a lot of views configured, uh, but we can see it as, for example, if I go and edit the one that we are looking at at the moment, I can uh, configure all the look and feel and all the different options. For example, here we can see that I set the default language as Italian. Let me move it back to English because I think that all my colleagues will be uh, happier if it's in, uh, in English. I can uh, enable uh, different services, uh, my related uh, records display, or, for example, the possibility of having a QR uh, for a research displayed on top of my uh, Primo V. This option here, use QR to copy and link, will allow me to create a QR that I can share with my colleague or my fellow students, and will uh, be able to uh, bring all the people that are scanning this QR back to this specific page that we have here. So this is like a first level of customization. And then I have a specific tabs that will uh, uh, allow me to configure specific parts of the system. Here, for example, we can see the links menu. Links menu are what is appearing here. Sorry, let me close this one. What's appearing here, plus here, if I want to get to all the different uh, options that we have. And here is where I can activate, deactivate, move those different uh, options all over the links menu inside, um, inside, sorry, um, Primo V. Other option will allow me to define uh, the profile slots. Uh, I've gone over this one uh, briefly, but just to show you that here is where you would be able uh, to, you can see that we have everything, the library catalog, the central index, and a digital, and these are the value that we have defined here. So here is where I would be able to define and rename uh, according to my specific needs all these scopes. I can configure my advanced search. How I look at my brief results, how I look at the full record display. So, for example, the possibility that we have of emailing uh, <coughs> a specific record, of creating a permalink, or pushing these records to different uh, reference management tools. All these specific options that I can see uh, here are configured at this level inside ALM. And all the changes that I might want to do here will be available in uh, real time to end users in Alma. Now, uh, we have seen uh, those for brief record, full record, but uh, also beside this, we have a full uh, customization um, section of the system. And this is what we call Primo Studio. And in Primo Studio, here, you will be able to take your Primo web page and uh, exactly configure all the look and feel. And this goes from, for example, uh, those boxes here, the colors and the icons, everything inside uh, Alma, inside Primo V could be configured via Primo Studio. 
and then uh, you will be able to have a preview at this uh, level of what you have done and once you are happy with those changes you can uh, just push them to go uh, to be able to be available uh, live and just uh, uploading the package that you have created so really all the customization is done in alma and uh, everything and uh, that you need to do is done in the same backend i think that uh, beside this the most uh, comprehensive uh, example is the fact that when you activated an electronic collection this will be automatically activated in uh, alma so you will have all the titles available for a search uh, in your repository but also it will be uh, available in um, the uh, available and active in the link resolver that included in uh, alma and in Primo V. So it's just a single activation uh, that will tie together all the activation that usually you would be uh, needing to do in a different system. And uh, for the last bit of uh, Primo, uh, before going into this uh, enhanced user experience that we are working on, that's the Primo Research Assistant that I was mentioning before, is uh, the fact that uh, we have seen really briefly uh, in uh, the session before this one and that Alma comes with a full uh, analytic uh, capabilities. This is called uh, Alma Analytics and uh, provides you the possibility of really analyzing everything that's happening on the library service platform. Here we can see that as and same as Alma Analytics, that's this uh, access to Alma Analytics, we have some specific functionalities on the same platform that will allow us uh, to understand how we are working with the discovery. And these are Primo Analytics. Just as an example, all the reports, reports and uh, information that we are creating with uh, Alma Analytics can be uh, exported, but they can also be um, embedded into uh, these uh, squares here that we call widgets that are analytical reports um, uh, updated in real time that will allow us to go deeper in some of the information that we need to manage the library. So, for example, if I am working on uh, e-resources, I can see the top classification, the top 10 with specific uh, number of titles according to LC classification. And this also goes back to one of the questions that we had before. Same as we have seen for Alma, uh, we have the possibility of running analytics for Primo. So, right as soon as I log into the system, I can see, for example, the most uh, popular searches inside uh, Primo in the uh, last 12 months. So I can really understand how the end user is engaging with my uh, discovery search. I think this is really important to provide you the data and the information that you need to develop your collection to understand how people are, are using uh, your collection and basically understand how your budget is providing value for your end users. So uh, we have seen uh, this and uh, now the last bit, uh, it's brand new, so uh, it's the one that uh, probably I'm more uh, excited about. Uh, and uh, this is uh, our Primo Research Assistant. I can ask, let's take it from the start. I can access my Primo Research Assistant, sorry. Uh, Opla. Let's go from here. So at any given time, I can uh, open the Primo Research Assistant, and uh, this is an AI-powered uh, uh, system that will uh, allow us uh, to run searches uh, inside the collection that we have at your institution. What I mean by uh, a high-powered uh, research assistant. Uh, basically, uh, there are really a uh, few important topics to consider here. This would work with uh, natural language. 
So, uh, for example, I I just copy this one. Uh, uh, or the, the second one, just a second, discuss uh, the. This, uh, Okay, you can input a uh, question in a uh, natural language. And uh, uh, here our research, uh, our Clarivate uh, artificial intelligence platform will take care of uh, breaking down these questions in uh, queries. Uh, it's uh, really uh, important to stress the fact that uh, we have developed this uh, research assistant, but we are making sure that all the uh, resources and uh, that we will be searching when running a search with this service uh, are the uh, curated information that we have in the CDI. So basically we are using a workflow that will, uh, via uh, artificial intelligence, will break down these questions into a specific strings that's an advanced query that will be sent to the uh, cdi and we will retrieve we will re in we will uh, once i'll do my search let's run the search in the meantime so you can have an idea of uh, what we are talking about uh, the in at this moment the uh, research assistant is breaking down the search in um, an advanced search to the uh, CDI. Uh, we will uh, find the most 30 most relevant results and out of those 30 we will provide you uh, we will take the most uh, important five results and based on those five uh, results uh, we will uh, generate an overview answer. This overview answer is based on the curated content that we have in our service. And again, in a second and a follow up stage through artificial intelligence, we will provide you an overview with clear references uh, to uh, that answer your question. Uh, as I was mentioned, we are working with curated sources it's not like a search in a general large language model this will allow you to point you specifically to the find the five uh, sources that have been used to generate this uh, resource and if i click on one of the sources i will have the possibility of really seeing uh, the uh, in this case is the ebook with an abstract and I can go and open directly this result inside Primo. Sorry, I hate when this happens because it bumps me out. Uh, I ha you can't really see it, but I have the Teams menu here that is interfering with my searches. So basically I'm running another search to make it uh, even uh, a little bit easier discuss the reception. So same as uh, here, we are generating the summary. We have seen that we can assess all the different resources that have been used to uh, generate this summary. I have some related researches that have uh, been uh, used to, uh, not that might be uh, useful, to go deeper into my research. And uh, I think that one thing that is uh, really uh, interesting is the fact that I can actually see the uh, advanced search string that was used by the system uh, to retrieve all the all the information that we have 
so I can take it from the researcher system and start working back in uh, Primo to understand what are all the found the sources uh, that have been uh, used to come up with my summary and with the top five uh, searches uh, results that we had at uh, presented by the uh, Primo research assistant. This is uh, something that we have been uh, developing uh, during uh, all of the past year and a half, of course, when we really set up at Clarivate uh, in uh, all uh, Clarivate in all the academic and government uh, pillar of Clarivate, we have set up um, some direction and guidance uh, to incorporate uh, artificial intelligence inside uh, our services. And inside uh, Primo, this is uh, what uh, we have developed. As you can see, of course, this is in uh, beta because it's a work in progress, but it's already available for testing to uh, Primo V uh, users worldwide. And uh, as I was mentioned, this will uh, also be available uh, for uh, salmon users uh, starting the beginning of uh, 2025. And uh, so I'd say that this is what we uh, I was wanting to show you regarding uh, Primo V, uh, just a brief introduction of the uh, discovery itself. And the capability for configuration and optimization of search and discovery, and finally, how this will enhance the uh, end user uh, experience. I see. So there's quite a few questions. Okay. Uh, but I feel I should just expand on my answer to one of them yes, about please. the difference between Alma and Summon. So yeah, they are alternatives. Some of our customers who already have Summon uh, but want Alma, uh, decide to keep Summon and put Summon on top of Alma. And that's that's perfectly fine. Um, I guess the reason for choosing to do that is because the, the students love the Summon interface and you don't want to have to write new guides for your students for a new front end. And, and that's, that's fine. Um, so Summon and Primo uh, do similar things. They are alternatives. They both work with Alma. Uh, but the crucial difference is that Primo is part of Alma. So when you make a change on Alma, you catalog a new book, you buy a new journal package or uh, make some other change, that's reflected almost immediately in the front end. Whereas with Summon, there would be uh, a, a delay of, of, of up to a few days uh, between the update you make in Alma and the update that people see in Primo. So I hope that it explains uh, that one. Um, yeah, the next question was, can the purchased request be integrated into other systems such as Synaplify? What the, I not. So the purchase request form uh, that you see in Primo, can that be embedded in other places, I think? Uh, I'm not familiar with this uh, Snaplify, uh, but what we have are APIs that will uh, allow you uh, to uh, integrate uh, Alma and uh, its functionalities uh, with uh, other system. Uh, so even if I'm not familiar with this uh, system specifically, uh, there's the possibility of uh, using Alma APIs to create this kind of uh, uh, integration. And there are many different examples of integration that have already been created with uh, Alma and its API. And it's worth saying that uh, Alma comes with a, a set of API that have been created from scratch together with the system to make it an open platform. And if I'm not mistaken, last time I counted, there are almost 300 different APIs that will allow you to uh, interact with the system and uh, actually um, pull the data uh, from uh, Alma uh, and integrate this with other system. If uh, uh, let me see if I can do this on the fly. Uh, live. Okay, uh, this is a live counter of uh, uh, Ex Libris called IPIs called. 
uh, in a second it will uh, update. Uh, but the interesting thing is that uh, nowadays in, uh, okay, we have had, uh, I don't even know, 3.5 billion uh, API calls and counting. The interesting thing uh, is that uh, nowadays, at least for the last, uh, I think, couple of years, and uh, this is breakdown by countries, uh, we have had more calls via APIs to Alma than uh, calls that starts within the platform itself. So the capabilities of integrating with different systems with Alma, it's really uh, impressive and widely uh, used uh, across uh, our uh, Alma community of users. Okay, uh, there's two more questions, both from Tabela. Uh, the first is, can Prima Studio allow institutions to integrate their institutional banners, or is it limited to selecting the colors? And the second is, does Primo analyze dead links or broken links? Okay, I'll take it uh, from Primo Studio. You will be able, sorry, I don't know where it finished, but you will be able, there are, okay, a whole set of, uh, actually you can do it, via, sorry, uh, let me, uh, you will be able to uh, add all your different uh, icons, starting from the favicon here to the banners inside the system. I think that the most interesting thing in this case is to have a look at some preview um, of some uh, live Primo V example from institutions surrounding yours and see how this has been customized. But from the, uh, let's call it uh, um, branding perspective, you will be able to add all the different kind of uh, icons that you might need. Uh, the second one would be uh, broken links, right? Yeah. So uh, here, uh, Primo is not doing that uh, by default. Uh, it will prob it will you will be able to provide uh, and and a, a user will be able to uh, notify uh, the library uh, if you set up a uh, simple notify button on uh, about broken links. Uh, what uh, you can do eventually is exporting all the links that are provided for your electronic resources and try uh, the uh, actually uh, viability of those resources uh, via some third parties um, systems. But uh, we have notification option. We are not checking uh, those uh, uh, those broken links by ourselves by default, uh, mainly because uh, that would collapse probably uh, our providers' uh, ser servers when they would receive uh, uh, from us continuously uh, uh, calls to uh, check for broken links. I, I should add that we do get information from most providers ahead of time if they're intending to change their linking format. Yeah uh they usually tell us so it shouldn't happen very often um and that we you know maintain that knowledge base for you so we will change the linking syntax uh, in accordance with the information we get from the publishers ahead of time um but occasionally yeah we're aware that you know it's just in the nature of publishers that they sometimes forget to tell us so in those cases, the students or you should use the report broken link function in, in Primo. Yes, thanks. And this is actually part of the work that we are doing in keeping updated our community zone uh, with information that comes from providers. I don't see any other questions in the chat. Are there further questions in the audience on site? Uh, okay. okay, I hope I hope I'm. Um, 
Okay, I hope I'm audible enough. Uh, my name is Bongsen Gubani. I'm from the University of South Africa. My my question is around the functionality of uh, the Primo discovery tool. Are there any special functions that caters for users with disabilities? That's my first question. My second question is, how different is Primo to Salmon discovery tool? Uh, are there any noticeable differences? And if they are, they are, which tool is better? Thank you. So just to clarify your question, was the second question in the context of accessibility? Which one is more accessible of the two? Or just uh, in general? Oh, the second question, uh, remember that there is also Salmon Discovery Tool, which yeah. I also think it's from the same company. Yeah. I just want that understanding in terms of the difference, the differences between uh, Primo uh, versus Salmon Discovery Tool. What is the noticeable difference? Okay. And which tool is better? <laughs> okay. I'll, I'll let Thomas uh, Tomaso comment, but we don't. Um, we we normally let people take a look at both and decide for themselves which is the better. There, there's uh, back office considerations and front end considerations. So uh, back office is, um, as we mentioned before, the more frequent updates, basically instant updates from Alma to Primo, um, which which someone doesn't have. It it has. Uh, automatic loads twice a twice a week, but um, I'll let Tommaso talk more about the uh, the other features. I would say in this case that uh, if we are thinking uh, about the two discoveries, uh, of course, as Robert mentioned, uh, Primo V uh, comes uh, right from the beginning. It's been uh, developed having uh, Alma in mind. Primo V is uh, slightly different from what the Primo that we used to have and uh, sell as a standalone discovery uh, for uh, years. So that uh, Primo V is basically the go-to uh, resource for uh, Alma institution that we have developed uh, on top of Alma. Uh, Salmon is uh, still a valid option uh, and uh, this is uh, ba basically a matter of uh, uh, minor differences. Uh, of course, there's a uh, back office and a log difference in at the time of the changes. So it goes from uh, nearly immediate changes to changes that in someone will take a little bit longer. But what I would say is that for an institution that is not using someone uh, and that uh, is then going uh, to uh, basically have a change in their front page for the end users, I would go with the Primo V. If an institution is already using someone, uh, then we are happy to discuss all the pros and cons and all the uh, minor details uh, because on uh, if they are always using someone that of course they will uh, need to change uh, their front end and uh, someone is still supported for Alma. So I think that the question should be divided into where are you coming from? If it, this is a, a, another no discovery or a discovery that's not someone. And then if your discovery is someone, uh, we would go through a full uh, analysis uh, to understand uh, what would be working better for your institution. Just, just on accessibility, both interfaces are fully compliant with the WCAG rules on accessibility. And uh, uh, I, I, there, there are really all those uh, reports on uh, uh, that uh, Robert mentioned are available on our knowledge center. So you have like a clear breakdown uh, about uh, both the WCAG uh, 2.1 and uh, of both uh, Salmon and Primo. If you want to have a look at uh, all the features 
specific features in uh, some in uh, Salmon or Primo, just like uh, navigating uh, the website using keyboard shortcuts or the possibility to have a screen reader that reads you uh, all the information, zooms, uh, advanced color contrast. I'm sending a, a link inside the chat or maybe uh, we can insert this in one of the PowerPoint that uh, we will be sending you where you have all the details of uh, this kind of uh, accessibility features that we have implemented into the discovery. Uh, we're, we're still here after lunch, so um, if people have further questions they think of over, over lunch, we can answer them uh, in the afternoon session. Uh, and uh, if people think of questions after that, we can always take them by email or, or um, uh, you can post them through. Um, uh, well, you can you can ask Tammy and uh, Sylvia to, to pass them through. Any further questions for now, remotely or from the room? There's nothing at the moment. I think we will be happy to take further questions later. And uh, we should resume later. I think um, Larson and Bitha, we're, we're bang on schedule, aren't we? We're going to be online until half one. Great. Sorry, we can't can't hear. Okay, um, we, the audio has gone off, I think, for remote participants. It's, uh... Yeah, we use the previous one we waiting for the lunch That's not That's not Next, we need some of this on my lights. Can we just assemble the equipment? It'll take two minutes. Can we take the blue picture? Please use that backdrop, please.